What's up, guys? Welcome back. I'm here again with Ashley Rogers. She is back with me for the sixth time now, the fifth time in this series, one video prior. I can't believe you keep coming back. I'm, I'm, I appreciate it, but I'm, I'm a bit Absolutely. like, I don't believe it. <laughs> Absolutely. It's my pleasure. I love being here. Awesome. Awesome. How are you doing? How is your quarantine going? Do you have plenty of toilet paper? Oh, yeah. No, I think we're stocked up and glitter glue, which is a must have. <laughs> OK, good. So the, the little kids got glitter glue. The adults have TP. Everything is sorted. Absolutely. Awesome. OK, awesome. So today we're back to talk about the SharePoint HTTP connector. We have talked about this in four previous parts. Today is the final piece. And so uh, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you. Why don't you introduce yourself and then talk to us about what we're gonna do today to kind of wrap this whole five part series up. Awesome, okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. So, hey guys, um, so I'm Ashley Rogers and um, as John said, we have uh, done a couple other videos, four other videos that we can definitely link you guys to in the comments. Um, and we've been going through all of the different methods for HTTP to SharePoint actions inside Power Automate. Uh, and today we're doing an end-to-end -end solution. We're using what we've learned um, and we're just gonna kind of do like a quick and dirty request and approval process using everything that we have looked at. So awesome. if you guys have not um, sat down with the videos with me, definitely go check out the previous ones. Uh, they're must watches, you know, to, in order to understand what we're doing here today. Um, but uh, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Ash Rogers, and there's my blog as well, spinbetween.blogspot.com. I talk about everything um, from SharePoint to Power Automate to PowerShell, all that good stuff. Awesome. When are you going to make a YouTube channel? <laughs> Pretty soon. There's actually some fun stuff in the works. So, okay, you know, okay, hang awesome. On. <laughs> Okay, cool. So a little bit of review of what we've done, just real quick. Um, we've been using SharePoint as our data source because of course um, the action here is the HTTP to SharePoint action. So we're working with um, information inside of SharePoint. Uh, we have gone over four of uh, the HTTP verbs. There are other ones, um, but these are the ones that we focused on to get you up to speed, the most common things that you'd be using. So we reviewed get, post, patch, and delete. So that's getting items, creating items, updating items, and then of course, deleting items. And, and so, oh, sorry. Uh, no. I was gonna say this this SharePoint connector, uh, it's, it's a special one here. It's an HTTP endpoint, but in Flow, it's the only non-premium HTTP endpoint. And so uh, it's a good place to get some practice to understand these concepts of what HTTP is without having to step up and pay that license. And so even if you're not working in SharePoint, it's a great place to just go and get experience with this, you know, understanding how these URLs work, how these different verbs work and so on and so forth. And if you are in SharePoint, then this just gives you some more power above and beyond all those built in actions that we supply. 100% right, love that. So for today, what we're doing is we are going to be working from inside of SharePoint. So if you have been following along with us, um, my triggers have always been manual so that we can just do the testing right inside of Power Automate. Um, but today what we're doing is we're hooking in a flow into an actual list. So what we'll have is information in the list and we'll select an item and then trigger a flow off of that item. So the information comes straight from SharePoint. It's a real world type of situation. And then what that represents is a project request that we're going to be submitting for an approval. And inside of that, we're going to be creating an audit trail. So what, we're, what we'll do is create another item based on this request inside a separate list. And that list is going to maintain all of the approval information, the dates, the requesters, and things like that. So it's a great way to have all that sort of information persist in mm. an easy to find area inside of SharePoint. And then you can start building dashboards and things and make it all pretty and and then you can you can take our whole like approvals center thing and say ha ah, look at my approval center <laughs> love it yes okay so let's do this let's do this All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring you over to SharePoint. We're in my Northwind Traders site. This is the site that I've been using for a lot of the demos that we've been doing here. The only difference is that we have a specific list that we're using, not our flow testing list. We're not talking about colors today. We're yes. talking about real information. 
So I have this project request list, and this is something that um, I've had to do for clients before in many different ways. There's always this concept of, you know, starting off a project and maybe they're not working in Dynamics. Maybe there's not a CRM component. They're just sort of doing these requests, quick and dirty, starting opportunities inside of SharePoint. Um, so we've got this request list and we've got information like a requesting department maybe an office, and then of course we've got this information that's baked into SharePoint lists already, the created and created by, uh, and anything else that you need uh, inside of that. And in here, if we go to the automate link here, we can see, updated recently. Yeah, it's updated. If we select an <laughs> if we select an item and we drop this down, we can see that we can run uh, a flow that I've created on this item. So I have this create audit trail and approval flow that's running straight inside of the SharePoint list. Nice. So before we push that button, before we actually see uh, that, we're going to go inside Power Automate and take a peek at our create audit trail and approval flow. So we'll go ahead and click edit. And then I'll walk you guys through what this looks like. OK, so what we're doing is grabbing the selected item from the project requests list. And that's pretty standard. You know, if you've been using um, SharePoint and Flow, this should, this isn't really um, uh, that different. And we and also have a I was going to say, if you haven't been using it, that right there is the trigger how she made it connect to her SharePoint list. So if you want a flow to show up in a SharePoint list, that for a selected item trigger is how you make that connection. Yep, exactly. Um, and, and with that comes pre-baked this uh, get item. So we also, what we're doing is for the selected item, and then we're also doing a get item. Uh, and this is different from our HTTP get. But what we're doing is doing a request out here for all of the information um, inside that item, and it's coming back here in this get item. So those two are pretty standard. Now I'm doing this extra get project request because there's some information that comes back that's a little bit different. It's formatted differently. There's um, we've talked about IDs for people um, and that information comes back in the body of an HTTP request differently than if we're using an out of the box get item action. So the reason that I have a get project request after that is to use that information specifically. So I'm actually using both of those. Okay. So to show you guys uh, what we're doing here, and again, you can refer back to the original videos uh, to get a more in-depth look at what's going on. I'm using the ID here from the get item above to make sure that I'm getting specifically that same item um, that we have run the flow on. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting back only one and I'm getting back specifically the one that I'm asking for. So I'm passing in the ID in my get. The next step here is to do a parse JSON action on the information that's coming back from your get. So of course you're gonna need to pull that body out of a successful run when you're building this, and then use that to build your schema in your parse JSON. Yeah, and if you need to see how to do that, we have the actually actually made the parent child flow video, which shows you that exact step already. There you go, and we've got an answer for everything. Yep. <laughs> The next step here is I'm going ahead and getting today's date in UTC. I'm just doing a UTC now expression inside a compose action to get today's date as representing the request date. There's a few things you can do to format um, the date, but that's not for this video. I know there's some folks who are doing some great things with expressions, uh, and so maybe check some of that out. But for now, we're just getting today UTC now as a request date. All right, so now that we've gotten all of our information, we can move on to the heart of what's actually happening here. So we do all of our gets, we set everything up, and then we're going to create our audit item inside our different list. It's an audit list. So what this is, is our HTTP to SharePoint action. I have renamed it to post to create audit item. I like to rename all of my actions to make sure that I know exactly what's going on inside each one of them. Makes it a lot easier when I come back. Definitely. So we've got a post. Um, it's a standard URI. We're talking to the audit trail list, which I will show you when we actually run this and see what happens. And inside the body, I'm using some dynamic content that's coming from my parse JSON action up here. So that's the reason that I did this extra get was because I wanted the information that would be uh, the appropriate to use inside the requester ID specifically. 
So I'm using the author ID that's coming from the parse JSON that we got in our get request. So you can see that it doesn't matter um, what, uh, which one you pick, which item you pick, or who's actually doing it as long as they can run the flow. I'm using all of this dynamic information, so nothing's hard coded inside the actual flow. So after we go ahead and create that audit item, we're doing another parse JSON to get that information. I want to get that item that I just created. When you do use an out of the box standard create item action from SharePoint, there is this option to use that something that comes back, which is that created ID. So it automatically will find for you what has just been created. It'll pull that ID in and it makes it really simple. But if we're not using the out of the box action and we're actually using our own post that we're creating, we have to pull that back. So I'm pulling mm. back that information here and parsing it. Okay. Yeah, so now we've got our second one. And finally, we can send information over in, appro in approval. So this is a standard approval. Um, I don't have information built out into this. You can build out information as you see fit in the details in the title, um, but I'm just putting this here to represent that we're starting and waiting for an approval and we'll get that in our email. Now, we don't need to do a condition on this um, approval outcome. Typically, when I do approvals, we do a different thing depending on whether or not um, it's been approved or rejected, and we do a condition and we have two different branches. Mm -hmm. In this case, we're going to update the audit item with whatever outcome that we have. Mm. So the next step is just a patch. It keeps it all in one straight line. We don't have um, any branches or any apply to eaches to deal with in this. Everything is very straightforward. Mm -hmm. So all we're doing here is talking to that same audit trail list, and we're talking to that item that we just created. You can see that this ID is the ID coming from our parse JSON2, which is parsing the information coming from our post above. So this is the item that we just created, and I'm Very using cool. that here. Man, that keeps it clean. No, no apply to each, no loop anywhere. And look at you using using compose instead of variables. This is a this is a lightweight flow. I love it. I love That's it. That's it. We want it to be fast and easy, and you know, you're not waiting for anything to turn through information. Yeah, very <laughs> yeah. cool. Okay. So down right. below, we've got in our body more dynamic information here, more dynamic content. Um, we've got the outcome is going to be posted inside the approval status that's in the audit trail list. Um, we've got a decision date, which is going to be today's date. Um, and of course, again, you can format that differently. You can make another request for another date, you know, thinking if maybe the approval is happening down the line a couple of days. Um, and then we're also doing something that I think is super cool, which is we are making a lookup. This is actually representing a lookup column in the audit trail list, and it is going to look up back to the uh, actual project request. So this is a great way to link the two together in case somebody wants to review that afterwards and say, okay, well, what item was this? Whoa. So we're pulling in the ID and adding that to a lookup column. You're getting deep now. You're making relational yeah. data in SharePoint. What? I know. Stop me. <laughs> uh, man. Yeah. Okay. So crazy. Cool. So, so we do our gets. You know, we've got to work through some information, parsing that. You know, in our parse JSON actions, we do an approval, and then we update audit items with whatever that outcome is for the approval. So, let's go back to SharePoint and run it. Let's do it. I'm excited to see it run. Yeah. All right, so here we are again in our projects request list. I'm going to select Project Evermore. It's a cool code name. Yeah, and we're just going to go ahead and check on the audit trail list here, making sure we don't have any information here because I want to make sure that you guys see this cleanly happening. Yeah, so we've got our requester, request date, approver, approval status, all that good stuff. Uh, and we're expecting information to populate here as the flow runs. So we'll go back to project requests, select project evermore, go to automate, and then hit our create audit trail and approval. And this is going to slide out a pane. And this is different you know, from anything we've looked at before. Um, and if this is new, don't let it scare you. I'm just going to hit run flow. And then we get a nice little notification that the flow has been started. So let's go check over on Power Automate. 
and we're going to watch this running. OK, so we see that this instance is running. And if I come in here, we're going to see that it is now successfully gone through all of the gets. It has created the audit item and now we're at the approval stage. So let's go ahead and look back at SharePoint. Our audit trail. So mm -hmm. what we've done is created an item, Project Evermore. The requester is me. That's coming from the information that it got. And the request date is today. OK, and then you can see that we just have the ID of this actual item. Nothing else as far as what's going on in the approval. Let's bring that here. OK, let's approve it. So we're going to go straight to home here in Power Automate. And I love this dashboard so much. You can manage all your approvals in here. You don't have to go to Outlook, which is great. Yes. So this one is from today from this run. I hit approve. And the cool thing about this is that if you wanted to build in comments and pull the comments from the approval as well, you could add that to the audit item. I chose not to do that today, but I could do that. Cool. And let's go here over to our audit trail item and we can see that the flow has finished adding all the information that we expected. So I approved yeah. it, got an approver. Approval status is coming from that approval action. And then the decision date today. And then this is super cool, our original item, Project Evermore. If I click on that, this is going to bring me to the information from the original item inside the project request list. Such so. a show off with the relational data. No, <laughs> who does that? <laughs> I love it. Uh, so let's check on the flow, but it looks like everything's good to go. Now it's going to take forever. Here we go. Right, right. <laughs> no kidding. There we go. Yeah, so we've got a successful run here. And it only took us, you know, a minute 30 to run through all of that. And that's with me talking. So super, super fast, um, easy. You can see that all the information populated, um, even the in, the new info during the patch, it came up without having to refresh the uh, the list, which is super helpful. So it's very good. That was awesome. That was awesome. It's funny. Uh, I had someone come to me today and ask for something very similar to this, a lightweight approval. And so this is going to be great. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to send this video to that person. They're going to be stoked. Uh, <laughs> this, this is super cool. This is a great uh, culmination, I think, of, of bringing all of this together in a very, very real world way. Um, I think that that if you're in SharePoint, you should learn two things from this. One, that working with a API isn't as hard as I thought uh, and, and probably not as hard as you thought. And then second, you should be trying to hit up Ashley to figure out how she's doing relational data in SharePoint because that's a big <laughs> deal. I don't know if you guys understand what a big deal that is. That's kind of a big deal. Not like it's not easy to do. Well, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. And I'm You're available welcome. for all of the questions. I love it. I love teaching people. Awesome. Hey, thanks so much for coming and doing this series and teaching us. I am sure they appreciate it. I absolutely appreciate it. So, so thank you again. Awesome. Thanks for having me. All right. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and check the description. Go and follow Ashley on Twitter. Check out her blog. Tell her to start her YouTube right away and, uh, and, and do all that. And then go ahead and click like and subscribe for me too. All right. Much love from me, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.